Hi, I'm Hans Wilhelm. Today I invite you to explore with me why it is so important that we listen to our soul. Throughout the day our soul is giving us messages to help us to lead a more positive life. Let us briefly remind ourselves why most of us are here in this very short earthly life. It is our unique opportunity to undo our karma and purify our soul in the fastest possible way. Karma are all our unloving sensations, emotions, thoughts, words and actions eventually coming back to us. In the spiritual realms, development and purification of our soul can be very slow and painful because we do not have the physical body that can buffer some karmic blows. And furthermore, we are only surrounded by like-minded other souls, like attracts like. But here on earth, we do have a physical body as a buffer and we are exposed to many different people and points of views that can challenge and teach us more intensely. Therefore, it is a tremendous gift to be here right now. Whenever we create karma, it gets stored in our soul, in our body and most importantly, in the corresponding repository planets. Eventually, this karma will return to us. It can be in form of difficult situations, challenging peoples, illnesses or even blows of fate. But before they fully manifest in our lives, the repository planets are sending us warning impulses via our soul to clear up these karmic burdens before they hit us in full measure. And these messages come via our soul and then through our nervous system, which is the link between our soul and our body. We often notice these sensations as squeezy feelings in our solar plexus. Initially, we usually can't tell if this is a warning, fear, shame, guilt or whatever that comes up in us. But it does make us restless and uncomfortable. We don't want to feel it or face it. It can be a strong emotional charge or sometimes a subtle charge that we commonly dismiss as a feeling of boredom or anxiety. So instead of looking at the messages that our soul is sending us and that are coming up in us right now, we try to avoid them. Instead, we are now searching for a stimulant that is stronger than our soul's message and that can override and ignore these uncomfortable feelings. For instance, we might be running to the refrigerator or do some other forms of escape and distraction that can even be drugs, alcohol or sex. But one of the most popular and fastest way is losing ourselves in the internet our cell phone, television, binge-watching or video games. We know that with a click or two away, we can be in a totally different world and reality and we no longer feel this uncomfortable feeling of warning in us. If our messy emotional state is too unpleasant, we want the extremely gripping experiences to excite us more and to totally numb our emotions. Here on the internet, our cell phones and TVs we can find an avalanche of these absorbing and distracting stimulants. May it be in sensational news flashes, movies, sport or computer games. And what is it that most likely gets our immediate and full intention? Anything that appeals to our base instincts. Violence, greed, power and sex. They are the key ingredients of the most watched TV series, top grossing movies, computer games and even news channels. Do we really believe that consuming violence, brutality, murder, torture, deceit, porn and similar stuff for a couple of hours a day has zero effect on us? Let's think about this. If that would be true, all companies who advertise their products on TV or internet would waste their money. But instead they spend billions of dollars because they know for sure that they can affect us and influence our behavior with their visual images. There's a huge industry purposely feeding us with false and extreme negativity to bring us into a lower frequency and dependency. We so easily forget that our brain has trouble distinguishing real from imaginary. Our intellect might know that this is just a movie, but our brain, our subconscious, our body accepts it as real. The same stress responses are kicking in here. They are producing cortisol and adrenaline and pushing blood around the body. The same chemistry is produced by our glands and hormones regardless of whether the danger is real or on a computer screen. 
All these dissonances and disharmonies affect the consciousness of our cells and organs and in particular our nervous system, which is the connecting network to our soul. It causes tension in the delicate vital nervous through which and, and along the spirit power or the life force flows to keep our body healthy and youthful. Have we ever considered that anything we experience repeatedly is stored in our organism and naturally also in our soul particles? Science has proven that every experience is permanently recorded. Every person suffering from hypothymesia, which is total memory recall, can attest to the validity of this statement. We can never unsee any image that we have seen. We have to take full responsibility for whatever we freely choose to consume. We all know that if we keep feeding our body trash food, it will over time cause serious health problems. The very same applies to anything that we feed to our soul. Any visual diet of movies, games and shows that are not life enriching can harm our soul and in the end change who we are and who we are becoming. Can we grasp that by willfully choosing experiences that glorify things like violence, greed, power and porn, we are lowering our own vibration? After all, everything is vibration in life. It immediately lowers our immune system and can open us up to all kinds of diseases. Tests have shown that people who watched, for instance, a documentary about Mother Teresa had a noticeable increase of T-cells, whereas those who watched a movie with violence had a serious deduction. Furthermore, the lowering of our vibration can be a portal or an invitation for negative energies. They can then inject us with Trojan thoughts of similar vibration. These are thoughts that we think are ours, but they are not. And with these Trojan thoughts, they can then manipulate us for their own dark purposes. And then, of course, there is a danger that we quickly become desensitized and numb to a certain level of violence, brutality and stimulus. And we will crave for stronger and even stronger experiences to reach the same high. Let me be clear here. There is nothing wrong with watching movies, shows, games or sports. I recommend them even in my various videos. They can be very life and soul enriching experiences. What truly matters is our intentions. Are our intentions just the desire to escape from that annoying feeling and message from our soul that we often dismiss as boredom or anxiety? Our soul has a very important message for us. Next time we feel bored or anxious, let's not run away from the feeling. Instead, we sit down, close our eyes and explore what this feeling could mean to us. What does it remind us of? Anything from our childhood? We question our thoughts. What false belief may be the cause? Is there anything that we are trying to avoid? Let us be with that feeling totally. And let it tell us what our soul wants us to know. We may be in for some great surprises. If you are interested to see what happened to me when I learned to listen to my soul's messages, you may enjoy my TED Talk video on boredom. The messages from our soul might be subtle, but they are powerful gifts that we should not ignore. Thank you for joining me.